Hey guys, I'm Dr. Whitney Bowe, board certified dermatologist, and today we are going to talk about the gut microbiome and the skin microbiome. How are they the same? How are they different? And how can you start making changes today to get both of them to work for you to help you reach your skin goals? So conversations surrounding the gut microbiome have been taking place for years, right? You know, I think pretty much everyone now knows that yogurt and drinking kombucha and eating sauerkraut is good for your gut microbiome. But the skin microbiome, that's sort of come to the forefront lately, especially with a whole bunch of skincare products launching, claiming to be microbiome friendly or support a healthy microbiome, you know, over the last couple of years. And oftentimes, at least at the beginning, when those products first started to come out, they were simply taking a strain of a probiotic or good for you bacteria that was proven to be helpful for the gut and sort of slapping it into a skincare product and putting the word probiotic on the label and selling it. But is that really good for your skin? You know, is what's good for your gut good for your skin? Do those microbiomes have anything in common? Let's dive in. Environment in the gut is like a warm, humid rainforest, right? It's moist and it's nutrient rich. Now compare that to the environment on the skin. The skin is sort of like a desert, right? It's gonna be much more dry and nutrient poor. And if you take it one step further, the different areas on your skin are very different in terms of the microbiome because the ecosystem, the environment, the terrain is different, right? So the face, chest, and back are considered sebaceous and the types of bugs that like to grow there are very different from the types of bugs that like to grow on the arms and the legs, which are much more dry. And those types of bugs are very different from the types of bugs that you would grow, say in your armpits, in your groin, between your fingers and between your toes. Those areas are considered moist. So the ecosystem, the microbial environment is completely different, you know, depending on where you're swabbing. Where are you taking that microbiome sample from? If you're swabbing your forehead, swabbing your underarm, swabbing between your toes, you're gonna find a very different microbiome. Clearly, you can already see that what might work for the gut microbiome might not work for the skin microbiome. And what works for the skin microbiome in one location might be completely different from the probiotic technology that works for the skin in a different location. So we just talked about how the gut microbiome is different from the skin microbiome and how different parts of the skin microbiome, you know, depending on where you are on the skin, uh, those microbiomes can look very, very different, right? But what is sort of a consistent theme? What do they have in common? Well, one common theme for most of these different areas that we're talking about is that diversity of the microbiome is key. So when you talk about a diverse microbiome, you're talking about a beautiful array of different microorganisms. The more, the better, right? And when one species, when one bacterial species or strain starts to overgrow and crowd out those other microorganisms, that leads to badness. The technical term for that is dysbiosis, and it's basically this loss of balance. So really in the gut and in most areas on the skin, you know, what we really wanna do is we wanna nourish a beautiful diverse array of microorganisms in order to live our best lives and see our most beautiful radiant skin. What can we do today to bring that balance back and to start really increasing that diversity that we're seeing when it comes to our skin microbiome. Well, I'm gonna give you three tips, okay, that you can start implementing today. So number one has to do with stress. The more stressed out we are, the less diverse our microbiome in our gut and on our skin. So what you wanna do is you wanna start exercising regularly and you wanna really protect your sleep. So two ways to protect your sleep and get your circadian rhythm back into a, you know, a healthy state because your circadian health is so important to your overall stress levels it, throughout your body. What you wanna do is you wanna try to block blue light from entering your eye, especially about an hour before bed. So you can put your device on like night shift or night mode, or there's even blue light filtering glasses that you can order online now. And another really important way to protect your sleep and protect your circadian rhythm 
is not to eat a heavy meal right before bed. So we now know that by eating, it actually sort of stimulates our body to wake up and can actually disrupt our circadian clock. And that in turn can increase our stress levels and our stress hormone levels throughout our body and in our skin. And that can take a significant toll on the skin. So tip number two has to do with your diet. You wanna eat the rainbow. So a variety of brightly colored fruits and vegetables are going to feed and nourish a diverse array of healthy bugs in your gut. And we know that our gut and our skin are intimately connected. So when you have a healthy gut microbiome, that in turn will actually impact your skin microbiome through the immune system, but also through other mechanisms as well. In fact, there's a recent study showing that by changing your diet, you can directly change and impact your skin microbiome. And I'm gonna actually share a link to one of the most recent studies below. And tip number three has to do with how we're taking care of our skin. Stop over cleansing, stop over exfoliating, and start moisturizing. For those of you who follow me on Instagram and TikTok, or have watched some of my YouTube shorts, you know that I'm always talking about building in what I call recovery nights into your skincare routine. So if you're going to potentially disrupt your skin barrier and or microbiome with ingredients like retinoids or glycolic acid, which are amazing by the way, by all means, go for it. You have to build in nights where you're really just focusing on restoring and repairing a healthy, diverse microbiome and skin barrier. You need your skin barrier to be nice and healthy for your microbiome to be diverse and to flourish. So you really want to focus on nourishing, hydrating ingredients during those recovery nights. And I will link to some of my very favorite skin microbiome friendly products below. So start showing some love to your microbiome today and also be sure to subscribe and check out this playlist on how the gut is connected with our skin. All right guys, see you next time.